The NLX 3000 from DMG Mori is yet another of your latest investments here at MCNC. Now, firstly, what were your main considerations choosing this particular machine tool? Size, really, and power. Um, we felt that the, the NLX 3000 would complement our existing NLX 2500s with subspindles and Y axes very, very well. So we've got compa compatibility with the control and the software. Um, this particular machine here, the 3000, has got an impressive Z axis of 1.25 meters with a stale stock. Um, and it's the, the, the built in motor on the driven tools is so powerful. It's like having a a small turret mill fixed inside your machine there. So when we're doing PCD work, lots of flats, bolt holes, those kind of simple milling operations that would have required a second or a third operation on, on one of our milling machines, this thing just eats it. And the, the diameter um, of, the, of the components that we fill, I think the largest we put on there at the moment is around the 400 mil mark, um, stainless steel, very difficult to cut materials. The coolant pressure on this is also amazing. The swarf clearance is fantastic. And the operators love it because of the accessibility from an operator's point of view to be able to load and unload work in there. Now, obviously we've got an overhead crane here to put in the larger billets, but what the operators like is the fact that they can not get in the machine, but the, the access to the component, the turret, is surprisingly accessible. In fact, the envelope of the, the weather with the doors opening there it allows for easy access and the operability from an operator's point of view um, well our guys just love it and um, they're, they're always fighting to jump on one of the NLX's or the other. So for this particular machine you know just to go over really a little bit of what you've said it, it's for large billet work predominantly but tough materials so you need that rigidity and stability and you're getting this with this product. Absolutely the You've hit the nail on the head there. Um, we, we machine an awful lot of nitronics, past alloys, ink canals, titaniums, dif difficult alloys. And our operators do love it because they find the work, not, I'm not going to say easy because nothing's easy in this world, um, especially when it comes to engineering. We all know how unforgiving it can be at times. But they absolutely love the rigidity on it. Um, we found that on one particular job, our tool life saving went through the roof. Um, that therefore increased our efficiency and that's what we're trying to do is forgive the old adage but if the spindles aren't turning we're not earning but this is not just turning you mentioned built-in motor now the billets that you're putting on this machine you're turning and milling now you'd 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 assume that you get the rigidity from the turning aspects of the machine but you're also saying that the milling functionality on this machine, you're still getting that rigidity with that built-in motor. I mean, it does look a chunky old turret on there. Yeah, you're right, Gio. It's a large chunk of steel there that's, uh, that encompasses the turret. Um, to be honest, we were blown away by the rigidity of, of the driven tools. I think the built-in motor significantly helps. Um, and again, we are machining difficult to machine stainless steel. So we're machining slots, we're drilling holes, we're tapping, and we had an M20 tap in one of those holders, and it went through stainless steel for E16 like it was cut and butter. Um, again, we're using various different types of strategy on the tooling as well. However, for simple slots, keyways, PCDs, it, it's like child's play. It's, it's really easy, really rigid, and the tool life and the quality of the component we're seeing fantastic savings and benefits from. Now, you know, you don't do simple parts here at MCNC. The components that I've seen here today are very complex parts. Now, there's been a transition in regards to the programming language that you're using, and I've just seen one of your operators still programming on the duckboard. So how are they getting on with the CLOS control? How are they finding it to program some of these complex parts? Again, the guys, the guys love it. They, on the CELOS control, there is an ISO function, and what they like about it is the soft user interface, the soft keys on the user interface. It enables them to edit CAM programs. You mentioned complex parts. A lot of our programs are downloaded straight from our CAD CAM packages. And however, we do rely on the skilled guys here to edit those programs. 
and what they like is that they can jump in between lines very easily and do simple edits or even sometimes more complicated edits very effectively with the, the Celos control. And do you believe through the software that this has even further uh, improved efficiency? I would say so because of the speed they can access. It's not like back in the old days there where you would have to go through screen after screen or page after page to get to the, the element of the control that you needed to edit. Soft, soft keys, boom, they're there, quick edit, punch in a few figures, return, step back into where they need to be and they find it very, very... Well, the guys love it and like I said earlier, they, they do fight to get onto this machine and uh, the born of the benefit of of going down the DMG Mori road that there's a lot of synergy between the controls on all of their machines. So the learning curve from one machine to another isn't necessarily just on the control. Um, I would say it's more about getting the feel of um, the actual machine itself. So when you go from one car to another, it's where's the indicator, where's the wiper. That bit's all there. What you're learning when you jump from one car to another is how much power's on the, on the throttle and what is the, the steering and the handling like. So the guys are able to put much larger cuts in. It's quicker, it's effective. And we did have one job that used to squeal like a banshee. And now you can hear the radio over it now when we're repeating that job. So it's brilliant. So, you know, I think it's safe to say, really, you've made an absolutely huge investment in DMG Murray machines recently. This was a one of them investments. So going into the future, looking into the next five years, would this potentially another one of these machines be on your uh, on your shopping list through through the experience that you've got from it so far? I would say that would be at the top of our list for the next consideration. Now, um, from my point of view, it's just trying to gauge whether do I go up another size or do I buy an identical one or do I possibly look at one with a sub spindle? Um, it all depends on. But the way it's going, then yeah, potentially another one could be on the cards quite soon.